world, welcome back, Making It Nation. Welcome to another episode of Making It with Chris G, where we have conversations with people in the world of entertainment who are making it from behind the scenes to the spotlight, sharing their stories and insight that help you get one step closer to making it. Thanks, everybody. Welcome back to Making It with Chris G. I hope you guys had an awesome Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoyed the the Thanksgiving special episode where we had five lessons to building a foundation of mastery. This was basically a highlight episode with a few lessons in between where we elaborated on each of the five lessons. But these highlights included lessons from Greg Rowlett. Eric Charles, Christine Cameron, Alex Knight, and Catherine Forbes, who have all been very awesome and great past podcast guests. It actually came out really good. I hope you guys had a chance to listen to it and want to encourage you guys to check it out. Five lessons to building a foundation of mastery in the entertainment business. Just want to Again, encourage you guys, please subscribe on iTunes or Podcast Addict, anywhere where podcasts exist. Leave us a review. It really helps the podcast out a whole lot. Five stars will be awesome. But, you know, if, if we sucked and we just didn't bring it, then give us one star. But hopefully it's a five star review. If you get a quick chance to write a couple words, that would be amazing. It really does help us out in the iTunes rankings and gets us more listeners. Keeps this podcast coming back to you guys every single week for free every Thursday. And we're also now on SoundCloud. So you can go on soundcloud.com forward slash Chris Goy Sweta. That's G-O- Chris C-H-R-I-S. And the last name is G-O-Y-Z-U-E-T-A. So soundcloud.com forward slash Chris Goy Sweta. You can also find me at uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Goy Sweta. Feel free, please, to keep in touch. Don't be shy. Let us know what you think of the podcast. Let, let us know any questions you might have for guests, any types of guests you'd like to see or types of guests you'd like to see more of. We're all about bringing the best information to you guys possible about the world of entertainment and the music industry. And I hope you're enjoying what you're hearing so far. We're also starting to release the episodes on YouTube as well. So if you're a YouTube person, uh, we're going to be releasing them every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube until we're all caught up with the podcast. And then we'll just keep releasing every Thursday with the regular schedule. And the website is almost up as well. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We got the, the podcast going on iTunes, the SoundCloud going, the YouTube going. Now, now the website needs to get ready next for you guys. So on to the lesson of the week. So this was inspired by Alex Knight. And the part that's inspired by Alex Knight is branding the lesson of the week. And, you know, we do this this music business talk on, on Twitter and it's called MB Talk. So if you search the hashtag MB Talk on Twitter, you'll find some of the conversations we've had there. And why not better than to call this this session MB Talk? MB Talk with Chris G, Music Business Talk. Lesson for this week is become a content creator. Regardless if you're a musician, actor, comedian, marketing person, or anybody that's going into any entertainment or creative field, Becoming a content creator and a content expert, like learning as much as you can about creating and posting consistent content will really help you stand out with your fans, create a following and and engage with your fans. So I read this book by Joe Pulizzi, P-U-L-I-Z-Z-I. And in this book, there is a chapter where he talks about the three and three model. So the three and three model basically is content always comes in stages of three so the first three state first three types of content are personal and then the second three are business related and I mean, technically they're both business but the first three types of content are very personal to what your goals are what you're trying to reach so they're the personal stage and for for joe uh, polizzi in the book his first three the personal ones were blogging, writing books, and public speaking. That's how he created content. Then the next three were digital media, print, so it was a, a weekly, a monthly magazine that they printed, and organizing their own events. So if you're a musician, an example of your big three could be the first three that are personal, right? You're writing and releasing music, shows, 
And the third one could be blog or it could be YouTube videos. It could be a weekly video of you performing a cover or a weekly video of you performing one of your songs in acoustic or some kind of weekly entertainment with video to keep your audience engaged. Or it could be a blog. You could be writing a weekly blog about an area that you're interested in outside of your your music, more an area that inspires your music or such something that inspires you in life or something else that you like to pass on to people and teach. So, And then the second three, so the business three of your music career or creative career can be a weekly web series, it could be a book, it could be organizing your own festival or your own events. Um, the, the blog could be in there again for if you're if you're not using it in the beginning. So or re, or releasing also a monthly magazine or something. Just come up with what fits your brand and what makes keeps authentic to you and who you are. But split those up into two stages of three. So figure out your first three, and you don't have to do all three at once. But when you start your content plan, kind of plan it out with the thought of there being three elements to your content. So for example, for the podcast, um, the this show, Making It With Chris G, right? The first big three are the, the personal ones. So first is this podcast, which is a weekly podcast. Then we have plans on having a weekly blog coming soon and potentially a, a weekly web s- series or where, where we have lessons or doing our own events. So those will probably be our first big three. And with other plans to come, but I don't want to like really tell you guys all about all our plans right now. I want to keep some some element of surprise, but figure out what are your first three that are very personal to you, right? It's important to create content to engage with your fans by creating consistent content. There's a way that helps you build an audience. It helps you engage with your audience and helps build trust with your audience by providing value and not always selling to them. I always like... By providing something they can consume that it's entertaining to them without having to feel obligated with buying something every time. So that's the whole concept of content marketing or content creation is trying to provide value to your audience. So Gary Vanderchuk has this really cool quote in his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, where he says, give them so much value, they feel guilty not supporting you. So if you give people so much value when your call to action comes so your sales pitch when you finally want them to buy a ticket to your show or buy your music or your movie your film your book whatever it is you want them to buy after you've created so much value for your audience they're they're going to want to support you and and if they're not they're not the right audience but you should create so much value for your audience that they're going to want to support whatever you're trying to sell to them because they know what the quality is going to be. They're going to trust what it is that you're giving them. So give them so much value. They feel guilty, not supporting you. Start creating content, start making something now. Don't wait. As Greg said, ready, fire, aim. Don't wait to aim. Just start doing, create your content. So that's our lesson for the week. Let's go on to today's guest. Today's guest is another good friend of mine. His name's Adam Taylor. He graduated from Full Sail University with a, an associate's degree in show production and a bachelor's degree in music business. After he graduated from Full Sail, he went on to work at the Plaza Live where he became the production manager. Then from there, after several years and several battles and wars, as I call them, at the Plaza, he went on to become a tour and production manager for a band called Delta Ray, who he ran sound for Right out of the first three months, he ran sound for them at the Democratic National Convention where he met Michelle Obama. He's also ran sound for them at the David Letterman show and other many other TV shows. He's also worked with them at Bonnaroo, Hangout Fest, Voodoo Fest, Austin City Limits, and many, many more amazing festivals. He works full time for the band, whether they're on tour or not. Adam has traveled with Delta Ray all over the world. And he's just in the early stages of what's going to be a very beautiful career, whether it's the entire time with Delta Ray or he's going to move on to other bands from there on. But he's going to be a very successful tour and production manager. And it's really awesome to share that side of the road life of 
of a production manager and a tour manager with you guys to see a different perspective of the different types of careers that are out there. Adam is very creative as a production manager and is always willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to be very successful at what he does. And I'm really excited to present this interview to you guys with Mr. Adam Taylor. Yo, Chief. What up, Chief? <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> so uh, it's good to have you in town, man, in Orlando. Good. Yeah, it's good Good to be back. It's been uh, been a few few years with off and on quick little visits. But, yeah, it's good to be back. Nice weather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we were hanging out at a food and wine festival in Epcot. Yeah. And that was fun. Um, thanks for, for inviting me to come out there and spend time, meet your girl. And Oh, yeah, it was fantastic. Bring we, Alicia along. Yeah, we walked all the way across the park, and uh, first stop is Germany. Travel the world ha- all yeah. to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so cliche. I always like feel like pe- feel like people always feel like obligated to take me to eat German food. I'm like, hey, I can eat German food at home, and I'll go eat at a German restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, I just feel like I wanted the uh, – the first-hand experience of Germany. Yeah, yeah <laughs> with yeah. the German there for, for the, speaking the language. Yeah, for, for for the second time anyway. Yeah, yeah. It was just, <laughs> yeah well, danke schön for uh, for for uh, hanging with me over there. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. <laughs> what was your favorite uh, beer or your favorite place to eat? Oh God, well, uh, well it was a, I think Scotland or something had like a, a whiskey aged stout. Oh, uh, nice. That's not oh, good. Oh, it was, it was delicious. Nice. Got a lobster roll too mm. over in America. <laughs> oh, it's good times. Uh, I have this favorite beer from from Iceland, and they had it on tap Ooh. at the Iceland booth. So I yeah, had to grab what, that. What was that? What was that? Man, actually, it's uh, Einstock. I think is the name of it. Okay. Yeah, it's real good. I'm sure it's not spelled anything like it sounds. Uh, well, I mean, I I, I sound in German in my head, so <laughs> Th- it, it spells like yeah. what it sounds in German. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess we'll, we'll go over your story a little bit and I know you have a lot of cool experiences. Do you want to give someone maybe like the, the brief overview about what it is you are doing today and what your, your title is and what your day to day looks like? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, currently, uh, front of house, uh, and production manager for a band called Delta Ray. Um, and sometimes also, uh, tour manager when the, uh, when the, time comes for it and uh been doing this for been with the band for over four years now uh and uh yeah yeah day to day is just lots of touring we're probably on the road 150 200 dates out of the year and then uh based out of north carolina um other than that so is that 150 200 shows you guys perform or is that just days traveling on the road uh it's just days traveling maybe uh uh, I think whenever I first started with the band, it was probably over 125 shows or so. And the shows have gone down since, uh, the, uh, the amount of shows anyway. But uh, the number of dates on the road have been about the same between mm-hmm. traveling days and uh, days with the band in the studio right. um, and just like uh, little corporate one-offs and stuff. All mm-hmm. the Yeah, so all the traveling, it's it's majority of the year. Nice. It's a busy schedule being on the road that much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it, it's it becomes home, and then home becomes that other place. Yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, we're we're talking about before we started this. It was awesome about you guys traveling. You get to take off days, which means we get to do cool stuff like this. And yeah. Get to talk exactly. To my, my students, but we were talking about um, usually the tour manager is the person that handles the interviews and stuff for for the band. So it's kind of interesting for you to be on the other side of the coin. You're the one being interviewed this time for, oh it's for so show. it's so bizarre it's uh <laughs> i mean i'm i'm used to microphones but uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your face. <laughs> yeah it's, it, nothing more than usually a check one too so this is different yeah that's cool <laughs> i think people are going to learn a lot from this and from your experience and insight yeah. so i'm excited and you say you guys listen to a lot of podcasts too it's like have you has delta rate on any podcast interviews or do you do you get the brag that you have done the first podcast? No, no. I wish I wish I could, but uh, I don't. I can't take that title. Uh, the the band's drummer, Mike McKee. He's a uh, he's a huge Disney nerd. Okay, like he's uh, completely in that world. And we had just we just got done doing the Epcot Food and Wine Fest, where we played nine shows in three days. Um, but I think prior to that, uh, there's I, it was amazing. I had no idea that there were so many Disney podcasts mm, out really? there, and uh, I guess Mike has made some friends in that in that world. So he 
uh, he people reached out to him and he did a couple podcasts mm -hmm. for for that and then he's done some drummer podcasts too and oh, I cool. think that uh, well one of the the vocalists in the band also hopped in on that that Disney podcast so it's uh yeah I, I can't take the title of first first podcast uh, well, right, but close <laughs> yeah yeah so close. Uh, um, what, what, tell me about Delta Ray uh, real quick. So for those that don't know who Delta Ray is, because they're phenomenal, they're amazing live, but how would you describe their show and what they do? Sure. They, uh, a band that's, that's been going about seven years or so. Uh, I've been with them for four years. Um, uh, the, the short answer to that is, uh, if Fleetwood Mac grew up in the South, uh, in, in uh, I think that kind of kind of covers it, but um, yeah, they're God, they're so weird. Yeah, I, I, I love it. It's so fun. But uh, the band's fronted by four very true lead singers, just insane, insane vocals. Every single one of them, e any any one of them could front their their own band mm -hmm. um, easily. But uh, so four lead singers, uh, two of which are brothers and then their sister is also one of those singers uh so three siblings and, a, and then a fourth that's uh uh just been friends with them since they were like uh, 10 11 years old uh but and then drums bass uh then the brothers one plays keys one plays guitar um it's like americana folk country pop rock so it cover covers some some ground but it's um uh, their 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 music is really fun because hmm. it's uh it's all like southern storytelling yeah uh mixed with tons of percussion and harmony yeah yeah it's it's really pr pretty fun pretty magical stuff yeah it's a really cool live show anybody who hasn't seen them yet they should definitely check out delta ray so let's get into your story how does a kid from missouri end up in orlando florida and go to full sail university oh god uh, uh with enough stupidity it can happen uh, <laughs> But, uh, um, yeah, a kid from pretty much middle of nowhere, Missouri. Uh, I think there were more cows than people. Uh, <laughs> but, um, when I was in, uh, the end of middle school towards eighth grade, my best friend, uh, he got a base, uh, I think for Christmas and, uh, you know, we've been best friends since kindergarten. So I was like, oh man, like I got to keep up with you. So mom, dad, can I play drums? Can I be obnoxiously <laughs> loud in the house? Uh, and uh, I was fortunate enough they were supportive. Um, whether or not they thought I would do anything with it was a different story. But, uh, yeah, so I, I started playing drums right before high school, played drums all throughout high school. Um, since playing I was, different bands while you're in uh, high school? Kind of, yeah. It, uh, I did, like, marching band, okay. uh, playing drums there. And then uh, did jazz band, too. Where So two hours of my high school career were dedicated to playing drums, which mm -hmm. I, I loved. Uh and then just me and my like really close tight knit group of friends did uh, uh, were in a band together. Nothing, nothing serious. I mean, yeah. I think in all of the four years we were together, we did like, two shows. But it was just we just playing for our own enjoyment. Yeah. Um, and uh, about halfway halfway through high school, I was like, uh, we all the band rehearsals were at my place, uh, my parents' place, and uh, we wanted to hear the singer. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, talked my parents into helping me buy a PA system. Okay. Uh which was was pretty uh ambitious, but I ended up helping pay my parents back for that by uh working on the the weekends. Mm -hmm. Um like like middle school dances and uh local weddings and small town. So um, you would use the PA system to get gigs with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just and I completely uh like undersold myself on like a hundred bucks or something mm -hmm. for an all day event. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but there was no competition in all of middle of Missouri. So right. <laughs> there was, so uh, it's like, I would get the gigs, but I wouldn't charge very much for it, which I, I wish I would have done a little bit differently, but, uh, <laughs> if I could have paid it off a little sooner. Yeah. Yeah. But, what, uh, what was your first PA? What, uh, Oh God, here we go. Uh, this is, um, this is where you can just cut all of this part out. Uh, let's see. It was a, a Behringer 16 channel. I think it was a 16.42. Uh, like a couple onboard effects on that, but uh, that was that was me learning how feedback works and <laughs> <laughs> learning what not to do. Uh, but I had a, a a Crown 602 amp uh, that was powering two Yamaha 15s, and then 
made enough money from doing weekend gigs. I ended up buying uh, some Yamaha, uh, dual Yamaha 18 sub and uh, got another Crown XTI. Oh, this is way too much information. But uh, <laughs> You had a good size PA there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was good. I mean... It was enough to do some some crazy damage as an eighteen year old kid, yeah, sixteen year old kid. When, I guess whenever I first got it, but it was uh, it, it was really fun. But I I fell in love with setting it up. Like, all right, cool. So how can I uh, take this setup and scale it and like maybe loom all the cables together so I mm-hmm. can set it up ten minutes quicker, mm-hmm. like uh, and get these weekend things done. And like uh, then once I had paid my parents back a little bit, and then I. Uh, would just reinvest in it, buy some lighting, buy some microphones, get some other stuff going, would rent wireless stuff for bigger weddings. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, it just became uh, really obsessed with cabling. Uh, anyway, so that was high school. And then uh, the singer of this this band, uh, one of my best friends, he uh, we were about to graduate and he told me about Full Sail mm-hmm. in, uh, in Orlando. And he was going for recording. And we were both into audio, so I was like, oh, man, this place sounds great. I hate studio stuff, though, so have fun. He's like, no, well, I just went down there. I did, like, this behind-the-scenes tour. They have an incredible concert program. And I'm like, mm. what? This is nuts. <laughs> so I'd never even heard of Full Sail. I'd never visited. Uh, but I was staying over at my friend's uh, house one night, and then we just stayed up to, like, 6, 7 a.m. talking about palm trees and, and Florida. <laughs> and uh, as a kid from Missouri, it sounded sound like a crazy adventure um have you ever been to florida prior to coming no here? no i think i'd been to colorado once when I, I was like 13 other than that i'd never really done any traveling uh that i could remember um so so it was it was uh it seemed yeah like a crazy adventure and then i was at the point like almost graduating high school and i was like gonna go into design drafting like wear a tie every day kind of mm-hmm. go go to the office it just just sounded very unappealing um so uh after staying over at my friend's house i woke up the next morning and told my parents about full sale they had no idea they were scared shitless oh yeah sorry this this was Uh, was when in 2000 (laughs) yeah this is uh like beginning of 2007 2007 yeah it's not that long ago but in those times i mean i mean even still today now it's telling your parents you're going to go to school to learn audio or production right like, exactly it's what does that even mean yeah, like <laughs> that's pretty far cry from like a law degree or yeah. anything uh and i just remember their first question was like great what kind of salary can this make uh <laughs> great how much does this school cost on all uh answers i didn't have but i just uh i just felt that calling i was uh just had to do it um so yeah a few months later i graduated high school my friend and i were making making plans to move down here mm-hmm. uh and then, uh, yeah, a few months after that, in fall of 2007, started uh, started full sale. And then fall of 2008, I had my associates. And fall of 2009, I had my bachelor's. And uh, That's the crazy thing that it happened so fast. Oh, at, it was at so quick. Well, it's, it's crazy being from middle of nowhere, Missouri, then coming down here. It's such a culture shock. Like, I grew, I feel like I grew more in that two years than I had 18 years prior. Yeah, it first was, time away from home, exactly. brand new place. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, all right, cool. Let me make all these mistakes. This is fun. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) When you, uh, I don't know what point during your time at Full Sail, you started working at the Plaza, but we both worked at the Plaza together where we met. And you first started off, it's a long question, Marie just went off, but you first started off as a stagehand and production assistant and eventually worked your way up to be an audio engineer for the Plaza and then the production manager. Now, everyone after they go to college have like some sort of fear of failure or the opposite, just feeling entitled that they can just easily walk in and get those types of jobs. And you are living proof that it's hard work, but you can definitely get it. Uh, what would you tell someone that wants to work their way up at a venue and become a production manager and eventually end up on tour? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Long, long question there. But, uh, as you said, um, we met at Plaza. I actually got a well, quote unquote job, at the plaza a month before I graduated in 2009. Um, uh, one of my, one of my really good friends at the time, he had a gig at plaza and, uh, he just asked if I wanted to come by. Mm-hmm. Was that Ryan or uh, uh, Scott? Okay. Uh, and he, he, we were just hanging out. So he's like, Oh, come, come over here. Like, we'll just hang. I think it's a, 
a couple Spanish comedians and uh, we'll just yeah, yeah just come by so it's like oh, two microphones like yeah you'll be set up in no time and uh, uh, the advance really hadn't been done for that show because they ended up showing up with like a 12 piece or 15 piece band mm-hmm. <laughs> to back <laughs> these two comedians so it was like uh, all hands on deck and by that it was him and I right uh, and so we had like 30 minutes before doors open we we're just like throwing microphones on anything and everything and uh, I remember Ryan who was the production manager at the time he uh, he said I like the way I worked and uh, I think the comedy show was about halfway over and like I had just got done sweating from running around and mm-hmm. he said uh, hey, I clocked you in three hours ago. I got some paperwork for you. Um, like, let's uh, let's get you here some more. So, did a few more gigs like that, and then there was a lot of there was a lot of unpaid time. Yeah, and I think that it's the good old days of the plaza. Yeah, yeah, and, and while like I think I was still growing and learning because I hadn't been in that uh, environment. Everything prior to that had just been full sail uh, in. Like everything was like nicely set up. You had uh, a good amount of time to set everything up, mm-hmm. and uh, the plaza was different. And that it's like, all right, we've got A and B. We need to get to F. Like, right. yeah, fill everything else in. <laughs> um, so it, it was it was a good learning experience. But there was a lot of free time, and like, and, and I asked for that free time. Like, hey, can I just come in and like? I see there's like a big cable mess over here. Right. Can I redo all of this? Can I help out? Like, I. Uh, I believe in this place, like, uh, I want to kind of leave my mark. And I think that a lot of that unpaid time really, uh, paid off later, mm-hmm. uh, by eventually becoming in a salaried position once, uh, my boss at the time moved on, um, and then becoming like, uh, head production manager over the, over the venue, mm-hmm. um, where I did a lot of my teeth cutting and it was, uh, it was really good for me. But, uh, my advice just uh, be prepared to do extra work on top of what you think you deserve. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if, if you're looking to do the six to eight hours or 40 hours a week and, uh, you don't want to do anything more than that, well, prepared to not go further than that, mm-hmm. uh, Absolutely. and put in that extra time. And then also like put, put a smile on, like bite, bite your tongue, grit your teeth, wh- whatever you need to do to get through the day. But, um, yeah, your attitude is what's going to take you further than anything. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, totally and, that, and that. that'll get you. That, that'll get you further, and then someday, randomly, uh, a band that you really, you really like and fall in love with, a, a come come through, and and uh, you'll hit it off, and then you won't hear from them for a year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, before uh, we get to that story, yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, speaking of cutting your teeth <laughs> and, and learning, um, at the Plaza, you also worked with a talent buyer me yeah who was cutting his teeth at the same time <laughs> and learning and put you through a lot of crazy shit when it comes oh to my God, the the production craziest. world what's the what's the craziest thing that i've ever put you through at the plaza oh the biggest frustration i remember at the plaza so so there was plaza that we did and then there was your side gig which was incredible at the time you were so ambitious uh at, at that time and, and currently but uh, doing the rock for hunger stuff on top of plaza oh, yeah. stuff god like <laughs> Uh, like doing the f- a full-on festival over, like, uh, wh- where was that outside <laughs> Tinkerfield, of Tinkerfield? Yeah. Oh God, that was nuts! But like, doing that, was that a long with day. you was, oh, that was just the longest, day, maybe the longest day I've ever had. Uh, uh, yeah, the the craziest thing that I couldn't, that that I couldn't grasp at, at that point was that uh, the band needs to feel good in mm-hmm. a room. Like I was more at that point, like concentrated on audio, like, okay, well, obviously the band would want to be on a bigger stage with better monitors. So, uh, cause the plaza for anyone who doesn't know the plaza was, uh, at the, at that point had two rooms and like a, a 1600 capacity room and then, a, a 600 capacity room. Uh, and then I was like, Oh, well, every band wants to be in the bigger room. Like that's like the, everything's better over there. Mm-hmm. And then the smaller room had less equipment, uh, less stuff, l- uh, fewer monitors. It just, uh, it, it was like more of a thrown together room. And, um, you would always want to put <laughs> bands in the smaller room, uh, for bands that had sold under a thousand tickets or right. under, uh, under 500 tickets. And I was like, Oh man, that is still feel good in the big room. Put them in there because I can right. do more in there. <laughs> uh, the better lights, better sound. I can have more techs on and in there to help me. And it was like, no, you've got this band that's coming in with 
400 people and uh, you're the only tech because we're actually not making money on it (laughs) because we had to go from the big room to the small room. And I hated it. I could not stand it. And uh, I, and that happened all the time because it's, uh, I mean, it's so tough for bands to tour down to Florida because you're like going to a dead end and then you have to circle back. But uh, I hated it. But ever since uh, I've, I've been on tour with a band, it's, it's amazing how the band feels on stage and what they remember from venues Mm -hmm. whether i mean some of the the best memories i have with this band that i'm out with now is like they they've loved uh 120 people in like a 150 cap room right wasn't even sold out or anything but that's like their best memory of like seeing people sing along or like they're just drenched in sweat and they love it Mm -hmm. um they love that more than the uh like big 3,000 cap rooms that we do where the audio is better but uh, the band experience isn't as good. But right, you, the room's half empty. Yeah, you you saw that. You knew that um, going into it. And as a as a kid, I, I didn't didn't see past what my own uh, priorities were. Right. Well, and you, when you're first starting out, I mean, you. I mean, I was first, first starting out too, so you don't know how to like explain it. All you know is the band's gonna like it better, <laughs> and we're gonna make more money doing it, so we can't go in the big room. But right, right. It's, <laughs> it's hard to explain it when you're first oh, starting yeah. out and you have a million things going on that we don't oh, yeah. all figuring out at the same time. And then you got this 20-year-old kid bitching about not having the bigger PA. <laughs> <laughs> what was the day when we had a we had a car in the lobby, oh, we God, had a yeah. show in the big room with another show afterwards and a show at the small room at the same time? You remember that, that day? Yeah. Uh, I want to say it was – I remember there being – Oh, like a metal band in the big room. Mm-hmm. And then no, co- no, metal band in the small room, and it was a comedy act in the uh, and that was a second the main show. room. And that was a show before that. Yeah, uh, maybe it was like the a jazz, jazz or something. something yeah, like that. yeah. And, and there was the, a time where we got into like a capacity <laughs> scare because all the shows were selling well. We have a car in a lobby taking up right, space, right? And we have hundreds of people <laughs> coming and then no space for it. what were we thinking yeah yeah because the cars were there because they were paying for sponsorships so that was income two shows in the main room that was like income from both of those shows like in all selling wells show in the small room uh everyone's at the one bar yeah for the whole thing and it was like yeah a thousand people in a lobby that could fit maybe 300 mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like it took like 10 minutes to walk 100 feet to your seat yeah <laughs> it was insane but uh being pulled a million different ways i had like 10 microphones to cover everything it was <laughs> yeah. oh god it was horrible and yeah, never never, <laughs> never enough equipment in that place <laughs> right right yeah that was one of those like get there at 8 a.m and leave at 8 a.m <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of equipment and then we, we brought it rock for hunger at tinker field we yeah pretty oh, much god. raided the plaza of all their equipment to put this giant festival on that we had no <laughs> gear for <laughs> Uh, and at the time, I was driving 1999 uh, Chevy Tahoe, just two door though, so it wasn't. It was big, but not that big. And you wasted a whole tank of gas just to go 10 miles down the road. Oh, <laughs> easily, easily. It wasn't how many miles per gallon, it was how many gallons per mile I could get on that <laughs> thing. Uh, but yeah, it was like carrying gear back and forth. Like we might have gotten a U-Haul for for some of the stuff, and it was yeah. like, oh, I forgot this. Like. And throwing speakers in there. So what we'll, we'll, we'll we have, four stages, Tinkerfield? Yeah, four stages. Yeah, we grabbed all the the bike racks from the plaza. Everything. God, we, all we the monitors. It. Thank God we didn't have a show that day. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been, been horrible. And any of the pl- anybody that works at the plaza, hopefully, hopefully you guys aren't listening right now. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, thank you for letting us borrow everything. Like Even our the plaza's main competitors, I, I remember we were like, started grabbing monitors. From yeah, <laughs> borrowing what, it from everybody. Yeah, what was in like Firestone and just like asking for favors from, from anyone <laughs> god what a what a thing how how does someone go from that crazy world of being a production manager at a venue that's pretty diy to ending up as the tour manager and production manager for a band like delta ray oh man the diy does not stop like yeah it's uh i love delta ray and i i think that uh really gonna go places and hope to go there with them but uh yeah, they're they're not not the biggest of the big, not on like no huge tour budget. Like when someone asks like, Oh man, great show. Like where's the crew? I just mm-hmm. like shake their hand and say, hi. I'm the crew. <laughs> <This is it. laughs> uh, so the DIY never stopped. And I think that's why I'm, I'm a good fit for them. Cause they're still uh, in, in their growth period. Um, but yeah, the crazy days are still there. Like we, uh, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, it, it just it doesn't stop. Like last year, going uh, to the to the Middle East for a few days on mm-hmm. like borrowing guitars that had just been sitting in closets and <laughs> just you just scrap it all together. Uh, even just a few days ago, like guitar straps are breaking and uh, <laughs> over at Epcot, and they've got all the gear, but still other little things that we've got to uh, fit and piece together. So mm-hmm. it's um, uh, it, it was like a lateral move. In, in that sense uh, of, of being scrappy, but um, yeah, it was like uh, the Plaza on tour with one band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you end up getting that, that opportunity working with Delta Ray? Because that's a pretty cool story as well. Yeah, yeah. So you, uh, the talent buyer of the Plaza, you uh, brought in a band called uh, Carbon Leaf. And uh, I think it was maybe Delta Ray's first cross-country tour that they had ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh they were opening up for for Carbon Leaf, and uh, they came into the small room. And I think that uh, Carbon Leaf was a headliner band. They maybe sold like 150 tickets or something. Nothing, mm-hmm. not, nothing huge. But Delta Ray was then opening for them, and um, just another day. It was like a one tech show. I was the only one on. I think there was a uh, another guy at the time that was kind of interning under me, just wanting to learn audio. Uh, so I had him as a little bit of help, but. Uh, Carbon Leaf did their sound check and then Delta Ray got on stage and uh, got their microphone set up just another standard day mm-hmm. and uh, then I checked their vocals and they blew me away with their harmonies it was insane uh, we had worked some some pretty big acts that had mm-hmm. come through Plaza mm-hmm. and these guys just blew me away more than anybody else yeah. and uh so I was very impressed at, at sound check. I was like, whoa, this is nuts. So I went over to the main room and I grabbed like a CD player, a CD recorder, uh, and brought it over to the small room. And I recorded their set uh, without them knowing. And then after the show, I was like, guys, you were you were incredible. Like, I'm sure you know that. Uh, and they were the most humble people I've ever met. Mm-hmm. They were they were so nice. Uh, but I said, uh, like, I, I don't know if you've heard you, but here's a CD of your your show. They said, oh, that's so great. Thank you so much. This is fun. Can we listen to it? <laughs> so we took the CD over to the main room with the bigger PA, more subs, which I was uh, – I, I think I might have forced that a little bit. Like, let's go listen <laughs> to it on these room. speakers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Show off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I played it for them, and uh, I still have video that I save on Dropbox so that I can look at it all the time. It's like a minute-long clip of them. Uh, just them in the room listening back to their own set. You still have the video of when you play them yeah, their song? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have to send me that because yeah, I share that I story in class all the time and it'd be cool to, oh, absolutely. to show that. That'd be yeah. awesome. I, I watch it maybe once a month just to be like, all right, that's like the, those really testing days where it's like four airport, airports and uh, people are at each other's throats or something like, oh God, why am I still here? Oh yeah, that's right because of this. Uh, <laughs> but they were just dancing throughout the room. Uh, they really liked uh, my mix they said wow you've never heard us before you you really get it what we want to sound like and uh yeah we just made a really good connection and then like two months later you booked them at another venue mm-hmm. smaller right, venue back, booth. back yeah. booth uh and they came through and so there's six band members on stage and i think maybe six or nine people in the audience yeah. <laughs> and i was one of them just like i remember setting the audio levels for what was my favorite song at the time and just I said it and then went out of the booth and like started dancing. Like I, I just uh, loved the band and I remember that night. I just told the band about this recently, but uh, like we didn't make any money on that right. show. And I think at that point I was making like a hundred bucks or something for mixing Don't audio. Mix and I was yeah. like, I was like, no, all right, these guys need gas money. Like let's just give it to them. Yeah, I think you gave them a hundred bucks and I gave them a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gave you mine. I was just like, just include this in with what they have and. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe give me a beer later or something, Chris. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And then uh, they, they never knew that you that you did that. No, no, not until recently. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So that was a fun story. I think we were driving through the middle of nowhere, Nevada, or something, and just just brought up old stories and told them about that. But uh, yeah, and then I, I followed them, and they came out with this really cool video, like on Halloween that year. This has been 2011, I think. Um, and then. That was uh, bottom of the river. Yeah, bottom of the river. With the chains out. and the trash yeah, cans. That's a really awesome trash song. Can. Oh, it was nuts. Uh, so weird. It was like a perfect Halloween song. Uh, but um, I really kept in close contact with them. Like, uh, and almost a year later, they uh, 
their manager called me and uh, I hadn't heard from them. Nothing had really happened. Mm-hmm. They said, Hey, are you uh, interested at all in maybe coming out on tour with us and being a, a sound and, and tour manager? And uh, I, ju- I just remember like, uh, great, let me make a few calls uh, mm-hmm. and get off the phone. Like I paced back and forth, like wore a hole in the rug of like the apartment <laughs> I was in at the time, but calling my parents and I called you like immediately after like, oh my God, what do I do? This is nuts. Like, do I leave this like fairly okay job that I have at the plaza uh, to do this? And But then I remember like I was 18 uh, leaving leaving Missouri and like, I, I want to see the world. Mm-hmm. I want to uh, do like, work on with music that I love while doing it. Um, yeah, that was my opportunity. And I've, I've, uh, been, been with the band four years now and that's, I've done just that mm-hmm. hit, hit those goals. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, what was the hardest part about making that decision? Cause you were pretty loyal to the plaza. I remember because you put so yeah. much, you know, sweat equity into that place and yeah. even brought your, I think those subs that you brought in, was that the subs from your, Oh PA yeah. I brought from? my entire PA and you I like brought your set drum it up kit in the lobby. To the plaza and oh, use yeah, that as yeah. a back line. I mean, you brought all your, <laughs> it's basically like your home away from home now. Yeah. I mean, I used the PA that uh, I got when I was 16. I used it at the rock for hunger stages. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> used it, uh, used it everywhere. And like, uh, I remember I had an office there that I probably lived in a little bit more than I should have and mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just stayed there all the time and yeah, blood, sweat and tears in that place. But it was, uh, uh, growth is a scary thing when it's like at your doorstep. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you, you know, like completely uprooting from your entire childhood and everything in Orlando, uh, and then going completely house of blues in, in New Orleans. Yeah, like but it's New Orleans. It's easy. <laughs> right, right. You're, you're, you're oh, going yeah, on tour you're with right. a band, and no idea. <laughs> they just, they just got. What they got signed by Warner just now. At that point, yeah, and right, right before they, they called me. Of, oh, yeah, it's going to be a two month long tryout gig, or it's going to end up being a four year plus. Career. Yeah, God, it was, it was so scary, and I think uh, I remember telling uh, boss at Plaza at the time. It's just like, okay, I'm going to go go out and do this, and he's like, great two month trial he'll be living out of a suitcase he'll hate it Mm -hmm. uh great we'll see you in two months and we'll be back at plaza and i uh it sucked there was uh, so many sleepless nights but um i i think that even even though the plaza was scrappy i think that i had like hit a little bit of a plateau Mm -hmm. uh and i i'd miss the i missed the uh the, that feeling of growth Mm -hmm. so i knew that this would completely throw me off get me out of my element and that two months was was incredible. It was, I mean, very, very uh, humble beginnings with Delta Rays. Like mm-hmm. seven people, two hotel rooms, uh, <laughs> like a twelve passenger van, like going completely uh, across the country. But right. had some great uh, life changing experiences within those those two months. Is like as far as like the things I saw in the country, uh, the people I met. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2012. Let's talk about that. What did your first year look like? You <laughs> met some pretty cool people in that first year already with the band. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's funny we're talking about this. Uh, uh, I don't know when you'll post this, but this is November 8th. The uh, <laughs> this is election day, uh, yeah. 2016, and I remember uh, the time leading up to the election in 2012. I, I was with Delta Ray from September to November, I think, uh, on my very first tour ever. And uh, their manager at the time was um, had just come from a uh, political or, uh, background. He worked for a, a blog in D.C., uh, so he had some connections there. And uh, the the band and the manager and uh, were all very uh, uh, big Obama supporters, mm-hmm. getting him reelected. And uh, we played a uh, the a rally in North Carolina where the band's from. And uh, like a month in a month into this, this rally happened, and I got to got to meet Michelle Obama, like like awesome. uh, next to my mother, the best hug I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it um yeah between that and uh, I think right before that we did uh, did the Conan O'Brien show 
uh, and Jay Leno also, uh, and this is all just within a two month span. We did, uh, drove across the entire country. That's all during your trial period. Yeah. This is my trial period. This is the, uh, like, Oh, let's just see if this is, uh, something that he'll work out for. Uh, (laughs) so we drove from East coast to the West coast up to San Francisco and then all the way back through. And I saw some friends from high school on that and, uh, saw like, I think my family came out to, uh, a show on that tour too. So I actually think I saw more people from my past on tour than I mm-hmm. ever did whenever I was in Orlando, uh, which, which was good. It was good to, good to see some people, but, um, that alone, I think really, uh, influenced my decision to stay with touring. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there, it was, it was a lot of, a lot of stuff happened that first, yeah. just couple months. <laughs> uh, then we, uh, it, and then after that, uh, those two months, I was like, all right, Delta Ray, like, uh, it's been really fun. I'm going to go back to Orlando. Uh, I just bought my flight. They're like, oh, what? You're leaving? Um, cool. So let's figure this out. We want you to come back. Uh, <laughs> and we don't want you just for a tour. Like, can you move to North Carolina? <laughs> uh, so I ended up moving to North Carolina, and we uh, started touring, I think, in, in January, uh, just 2013, just right after that. And uh, Obama obviously won, and we ended up uh, we did a, did a cruise in, in January, which was awesome. I'd never been on a cruise. That's a Kayamo cruise. Yeah. The Kayamo okay. cruise, yeah. like an artist songwriter, uh, cruise. And, uh, again, this is just me still doing more traveling, new experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was, I loved that, but, uh, I had to do all the coordinating for that. And then the day we get off the cruise, we fly to DC in January uh, for the inaugural ball, Hmm. um, in DC. And I just remember being like the most lobster red (laughs) sunburnt, uh, person at this place. Like my skin is like peeling from the sunburn. (laughs) Like you've been cruising the Caribbean. Yeah. In 10 degree weather. It it was, it was horrible. And I lost my phone on the beach like the day before this. So had to figure out how to get a brand new phone, like immediately getting off the plane. It was what a, what a mess it was. It, it was a, a whirlwind of a first six months or so with the band. And, uh, but yeah, best decision I've ever made. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Got a lot of amazing experiences right out of the gate. Yeah. And yeah. And it looks and, like you're still having awesome experiences traveling the world, this band. And yeah. Yeah. Did finally, uh, Hit, hit some other continents last year and the year before. And Have you hit every continent already? No, no. Uh, not many shows in Antarctica. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but uh, no. One day we'll play yeah. for the In South the America, uh, haven't, haven't gone there either. But, um, yeah, we did Australia and Europe, and we got like a, a little bit of Asia and uh, uh, nor- northern Africa as well. So oh, yeah, cool. been, but there's some places. It's it's been fun. Well, what has see. your been your favorite place so far that you've visited? Oh man, I think I think I told you about this. Utrecht, Netherlands. It's like oh, yeah. uh thirty, forty minutes outside of Amsterdam. So it's got the Amsterdam feel, uh all the the canals and uh the bike culture there and very the coffee is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh but without all of the uh the touristiness of uh Amsterdam. So it was yeah, it is beautiful there. I I love that place. Yeah, yeah. Would you go back just to the vacation? Hands down. Yeah, yeah. That, that's I, I joke. That's been like the best best part of touring is like, okay, so there's a lot of these places I go that I would never pay to go. Right. Uh, but knowing what places I would love to hit again in my life, uh, but getting that on someone else's dime has been <laughs> been pretty nice. Now, when you go to these places, you a lot of times just a real quick in and out, or do you actually? Get to, enjoy these places a little bit and travel a bit and do as many touristy stuff there there's uh it's a little bit of both it was really weird like whenever i i first started i'd never been anywhere really in in america even but uh i mean at this point i've been to uh new york 50 times a uh, hundred times like uh ridiculous but a lot of those times are just quick in and out mm-hmm. uh there for six seven hours have enough time to hit a pizza place and right and then leave uh other times we've got uh, three days off in the city and I can hit, uh, see old classmates. Um, Mm -hmm. but a a lot of the, uh, a lot of the international stuff was, was kind of quick in, quick out, like able to like walk, walk five, six blocks or so and kind of take in what I can. But, uh, we had a few days off over there in London. We got to go, I think had two days in a row off there and see a bunch of museums and, and stuff. Uh, and same for, 
uh, Australia was uh, not too much downtime there, but we went there like in the middle of January and it was the end of summer there. Oh, so it's uh, ca- oh, yeah, calendar. Oh, it was insane. Uh, uh, so we fly out of JFK and snow on the ground and then get to Australia and we're going to the beach. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's, it's a good, uh, a good, a good balance of like, uh, having some time off and, check places out the more you go to them Mm -hmm. now with all this travel i mean as much fun as it sounds and getting to see all these cool places what are some challenges that come that with with that when like with life and your career being on the road all the time and traveling uh it's um uh (laughs) finding a way to stay healthy on the road is uh is is tough uh just so many gas stations like as fun as it is to go to all these places, I'd say half of half of uh, touring is just uh, fifteen hours a day in a van. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, it's not not glamorous. Like we're, we're not at quite the bus level yet. Right. Uh, we've done a couple bus things, but which is really nice. But being in a van the rest of the time and going through middle of nowhere, no cell service, nothing. Like, just uh, that. That's. That that's testing, but then uh, well, when you visit these cool places, I mean, you got to try the food. You can't just go there and right, right, not have pizza in Italy and schnitzel in Germany, and <laughs> right, <whatever else. laughs> right. You, we just go to Epcot, and like, and then you, oh, it's not the same. No, <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, yeah. You go to all these these cool places, and, and you can do that. But yeah, the rest of and the rest half the time is just gas station food, like old like gross pizza or something it's <laughs> yeah, just not not great but uh and, and in personal life too it's uh so so tough to keep connections with family and friends uh mm-hmm. like you lose track of days like it's just um things get very monotonous and you, you don't have a standard monday monday morning at work or anything it's mm-hmm. uh days just really roll into each other and, and forget what week it is forget what uh, month it is sometimes right. I, I remember being on tour and the worst i've maybe ever felt uh like i forgot my mom's birthday oh, no. being on tour yeah i forgot my best friend's birthday my best friend since kindergarten i forgot his birthday like little things like we'd always call each other and, and such but uh I, I think somebody called me to remind me remind me that it was my birthday <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah That's yeah but, yeah it was it was nuts but uh well you're so focused on keeping track of the band schedule, what, where do they need to be? When do they need to be there? When do they have radio interviews? Do they have any in-store performances? Oh, that you exactly. Kind of lose track of your, your yeah, own schedule? Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes I forget to wake up, but it's my job to make sure everybody else is awake. <laughs> it's, uh, just, yeah, a lot of endless nights just being on the phone, advancing shows, uh, sending out emails, getting emails, uh, being in the middle of a show like, all right, cool, the band is off stage for 30 seconds while they're doing an encore. I can right. get in like two emails right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I go immediately from encore to all right, cool. Now I got to go sell merch, mm-hmm. and I got to do that, and get the band out here to do signings, and then I got to go pack up the stage, and right. uh, the band's got to wake up early, so I should drive tonight. So, right? Uh, it's it gets gets nuts, but uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. I've been doing it for four years, and I finally feel like I'm getting the hang of it a little bit, and like, yeah. can, can start getting used to it finally. Yeah, I can start moving on with like more personal life, like having a relationship and such. Uh, so, so it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. Nice. It, it's, uh, quite the juggling act. Yeah, for sure. Uh, who have been some of your biggest influences? Ooh, uh, people that a lot of people probably don't know. I, I, I guess that depends like personal influences versus like business influences. Uh, G- give me both. Uh, let's see business influences. Uh, like, like tour managing is, is okay but it's it's not not what i love to do i'm more sound and audio uh but dave rat who started his own production company rat sound Mm -hmm. uh and he's been audio engineer for blink 182 red hot chili peppers for like 30 years or something Mm -hmm. something crazy um he's got a crazy youtube channel that i'm always like stalking to see like when the next thing he's gonna post and (laughs) it's just him like in his uh in his warehouse just being like oh so i found out some of this weird stuff with sub frequencies and how they <laughs> interact with each other and i'll just watch those youtube videos all day That's uh cool. yeah he's uh, a cool cool inspiration um and then 
like personal life, uh, I I have a lot of the same uh, work ethic as my dad does. Mm-hmm. He's been in uh, a management position at a big company since he was uh, 16, 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been with that same company his whole life. But uh, I, I just remember, like, uh, he, he works at um, – uh, a, a, a big store and he would just we, we'd go to visit him and I just remember his walking speed was my running speed as a kid <laughs> uh, and I think that's how I move in a venue and he's uh, he's given me so so much great advice uh, especially whenever I worked at Plaza um, as far as like trying to be into a management uh, position there um, so yeah he's he's been a big influence uh, and luckily genetically I just got a lot of <laughs> and a lot, a lot of, of those yeah, yeah. characteristics right so that was uh, yeah uh, he was a big big influence on me that's cool uh, yeah and you, you think he's uh, as scary as it was for you to move to Florida and oh, man. pursue this degree that they never even heard of oh god you he, they're, they're proud now <laughs> of what you're doing oh he was so scared he co-signed on my, my student loan <laughs> <laughs> so he, he was uh, he was more scared than I was but uh, yeah they my, my parents love the band uh uh, I, I think they're I think they're pretty proud. Mm-hmm. Um, so so yeah, I, I think it's all right as long yeah. as I don't de- like fault on my on my loans. I think we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you you guys travel about two hundred show two hundred days a year. Yeah. Two hundred fifty days a year, and you've been with them for four years, and you pretty much work for them full time. So what do you do when you guys are not on the road when you're at home? Uh, a lot of the non road time, or at least in the past. Over the past four years, a lot of the times that they are off the road, um, they are working on new songs because mm-hmm. they're they're only two albums in. They're about to come out with their third. But when does they, that come out? Uh, hopefully, beginning of next year, okay. early 2017. Uh, hopefully, that'll be coming out, and hopefully, there's a big campaign behind it. Is that also uh, with Wood Warner? Uh, no, they actually uh, parted ways with Warner at the end of 2015. Okay. Um, and then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, another record label uh, out of Nashville uh, approached them uh, called Big Machine. Which oh. is, uh, yeah, yeah. Big. Heard, of, heard of that before? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, just really small acts like Taylor Swift and uh, sure. <laughs> Ben Perry. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, I'm one, sure Sarah would know a lot of the acts on Big Machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I think is a better fit for them anyway. Like uh, Warner, like. Uh, it was really like, all right, let's get more, more, let's get really guitar heavy. Let's rock. Let's, all right, we want you to scream these lyrics. And, right. uh, they're, they're, well, while they've got powerful vocals, they're, they're songwriters, they're storytellers. Right. Uh, and I think that the, the country world, um, kind of lends itself to, to that kind of music and is oh, a, sure. a little bit better of a fit. But I think that even with this country, I think they're gonna like carve their own path mm-hmm. in, in country. Cause, uh, uh, yeah, they're they're gonna break break some molds. Yeah. I feel. Um, I think what's cool too is like they were. There's not another artist. I mean, I'm sure most labels they're gonna be with. There's not another, another artist that sounds like them. Sure. But on Big Machine, there's definitely not anyone that sounds like them. They can stand out and be unique on that label. I'm actually really excited to see what they're they're gonna do there. Oh, pff, yeah. I mean, you you and me both. They've been been on the label for almost a year, uh, and. Uh, the process has been really fun to watch. I, mm-hmm. I really take a back seat with all of the label stuff, all of the studio stuff, uh, um, j- just kind of observing all mm-hmm. of that happen. Um, but what's really fun is whenever we're off the road, they're doing the songwriting and we've got a spot in Raleigh where they, uh, where we set up all the instruments and we've got a, another small PA set up. So they just go in there and they rehearse uh, a lot and figure out, uh, how they how they want songs to to move and they're like hey guys wrote a new song let's meet up tomorrow mm-hmm. uh, uh, let's just kind of kind of play through it um, so yeah I'm I'm there like hands on for all of that uh, cool. helping them out and recording it uh, as far as like just on a iPhone or a little handheld recorder yeah. or something uh, and kinda then just demo it to see what it sounds like yeah yeah quick quick little demos uh, then upload it to Dropbox so everybody has it and then we just listen to that and then go back reference it make a new version go back reference that mm. and uh, yeah, I think for this new album they've written 60 plus songs wow uh, and uh, you know, what makes a really good label is to be like alright that sounds good it's not great mm-hmm go back to the woodshed figure mm-hmm. it out uh and i i think that the the 10 songs that they've whittled it down to uh 
are incredible. Yeah, uh, it's, it's going to make for a big, big couple years coming awesome. up. I I hope. Yeah, yeah. not going to win. <laughs> when's, when's the first single supposed to come out? Do you know? No, no, no clue. Okay. Like, uh, we're at the end of our tour now. Um, uh, this entire tour, I think we started uh, March uh, mm-hmm. with this tour, and we've got just the last few shows coming up. I think we got three more shows uh, in Florida, and then ended in uh, end in Atlanta, um, and then they go back into the studio to to finish up the last bit of vocals okay. on uh, on their newest songs, and then I think it's pick pick out the single, uh, start doing artwork, start figuring out laying out the songs in an album, uh, get a campaign together, and that'll be the next December, January, February, and then uh, hopefully around then the album's coming out, and singles released, and tours set up, uh, radio campaign, everything that's above my head, but I'll I'll be along for the ride yeah, it's still cool that you're still <laughs> kind of part of all that entire process and get to be basically working with the band full-time and yeah yeah it's it's great i'm i'm feel pretty fortunate i don't think a lot of bands work this way where they they keep somebody on year round uh in, in like a salaried position um so that they they I, i'm at their uh i'm at their beck and call whenever whenever they need something but uh this year in particular has been a lot of free time because of all the songwriting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've gotten to be home a lot and do some other pickup gigs at mm-hmm. uh, local venues and, and such just to keep my audio chops uh, right. fresh. But uh, it's it's been a been a good balance this year. That's cool. Yeah, it's exciting. A lot of exciting stuff on the horizon. Oh yeah. What are oh, some I can't wait. What, what are some lessons you've learned from your experience on touring with Delta Ray so far? Oh God. Uh, lessons daily um uh you you can't confirm (laughs) you can't confirm enough times like you get in an email get it in text uh like if it's on a phone call it doesn't mean anything (laughs) uh just just write it all down a thousand times um uh you can't plan far enough out in advance uh and and because regardless like uh, when it comes show day everything's live this isn't the studio it all right. like happens in the moment mm. uh so so regardless of how much planning you do there's always going to be things that you've got to just be ready to uh hit the ground running mm-hmm. in, in anytime something's thrown at you mm-hmm. uh, and then uh it, it's it's really nice because we're we're a team still that they don't have any of the the band egos that you get with like fronted uh, bands where it's just one person and then hired band that doesn't right. really care. There, there's none of that. We're all still very much a team and they're carrying their own cases through the airport and uh, everyone's hands on deck mm-hmm. um, getting through. So uh, yeah, le- learning how to, to work as a team has been, has been pretty fun. Um, man, other lessons, like I feel like I can go down like a, a crazy <laughs> rabbit hole of that. Like, uh, you can't wake up early enough. Uh, <laughs> you can't get to the airport early enough. We we flew out of uh, Raleigh one time, and I was like, "Oh, this, this airport's quick. Let's uh, let's get there like an hour before we need to fly." Uh, and I was like, "That's that's plenty of time." We get there. We had to check all of our luggage. One band member like went and parked his car like kind of far away. He's like, "Oh, this lot is cheaper, so <laughs> I'll just go over here." And his bus took longer to get back. He got. Got up to the uh, the the desk w- to check in. Is like, oh, actually, you can't check in within forty minutes of your flight. Oh, no. uh, you can't get on this flight. And we had a show that same day in New Orleans. Uh, that night, that was one of the band members that couldn't. Yeah, couldn't yeah, go and in. he couldn't couldn't do that. So we had to find him a new flight, uh, wow. like last minute uh, on a completely different airline. The craziest part is he ended up making it in five minutes early earlier than we did oh really <laughs> to new orleans so it worked out but it's one of those like no matter what even if we know we can get through the airport in 10 minutes we always show up to the airport two hours before flight uh and if it's international we do three hours mm-hmm. like just to add in that extra custom if you, if you make a schedule stick to it oh yeah. To, <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> even if you can like have a little bit more flexibility don't yeah <laughs> and always schedule Van call, bus call, uh, 15, 20 minutes earlier than you need to because someone's bound to be a little bit late. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Little lessons like that are, have been fun to learn. Uh, 
in, in the last few years. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if, uh, speaking of lessons, if you could go back to yourself when you were at the plaza and give yourself advice, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, breathe. Um, take a break. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's it's all it's all serious, but don't take it so <laughs> serious. Uh, I I mean, I, in five years, I can I feel like I can go back and tell myself that now because uh, I still get that same way. But it's uh, yeah yeah just uh, just to relax a little bit. Like the the hustle is good, um, but also like li- leave time to to enjoy it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Set back and um, watch the show. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good lesson. Like, yeah, the hustle is good, but you have to make sure you make time to enjoy life. And yeah, breathe yeah. and enjoy time with family and like, enjoy yeah. the show. I mean, that's how many amazing shows have we experienced and or been part of, but right, not experienced right. the show. Yeah, like I, I've set up some some crazy sold out shows that have have been great, but uh, I just like get into my own head about like, all right, this got to be done. I got to do this. Got to do this, and it probably could have waited a little bit, and I could have. Mm-hmm got to sit back and watch these shows uh so i i'm trying to do that a little bit more mm-hmm. uh in my life now but uh yeah again I, I think i could still relax and take it take it easy sometimes right yeah tell me about something that didn't go your the way you wanted it to and what lesson did you learn from that oh great question something that didn't go the way i wanted it to mm-hmm. uh yeah, what what comes to the top of my head is uh, doing those d- the shows at the plaza. <laughs> uh, I wanted them in the main room, but uh, <laughs> they were in the small room. Like worse PA, worse worse gear. But I I uh, I, I was so mad at that point. It was, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, knowing knowing how the bands feel now, it's uh... <laughs> we just lost battery on our GoPro. So whoever's Bloopers. watching on youtube you can still hear us <laughs> so it'll be okay <laughs> right right uh but yeah doing those um do, doing those shows i wish it would go a, a different way put them in the main room but now being on the other side of it uh, uh i've i've learned that that's not the way to do it as mm-hmm. i mentioned before right right if you had to set three goals for yourself a six-month goal a one-year goal and a two-year goal what would you like to achieve at each of those points from now from now from now six month goal from right now uh to not to to be solely production mm-hmm. uh like a, a tour managing is fun but it's kind of like an, an a necessary thing right now but mm-hmm. uh ready to be past that and just uh concentrate on on putting on the best show that i can uh as opposed to it taking a back seat and like booking hotel rooms being the front right. seat um that's a six month goal what was the other one a year a year and two years a year uh i want to have have an audio team with me uh or at least a production team of some sorts uh and then two years from now uh oh man uh, i i af- have been being with or uh, i'm saying it wrong but after being with this band for four years like mm-hmm. If you would ask me a year ago to project out another year, mm. it would be so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so off. Uh, and same with two, three years ago, it would be so crazy. Trying to project out two years now is uh, oh, that's nuts. Um, I don't, I don't know. Be uh, be at amphitheaters, uh, yeah, yeah. big, big, big shows. Like I don't know, maybe do a second interview. Maybe do a second interview. Yeah, we'll do a follow-up interview and see how right. the last two years have yeah, gone. I'm into it. Awesome. I love it. I have a, a few more final questions. Yeah. Uh, these can be rapid fire. You can take your time answering them, whatever you like to do. Cool. Is there a question I didn't ask that you wish I would have asked? Or in the interviews that you've done in the past, is there a question that people never ask you wish oh. they would? Uh, I don't know if I've ever done uh, an interview before. I uh, Actually, I do know and no, I haven't done. Uh, so I don't know. It's all, all brand new to me. Um maybe uh uh musical influences well i guess i guess that depends if if the person you're interviewing is like has a big uh music background or is in music mm-hmm. uh, i don't know some influences like that i guess okay. and who are your musical influences well, uh, i mean i guess you <laughs> did ask that like who have been my influences but uh when i was in high school I was a huge 311 incubus fan and then that really grew uh over the 
the years following and it's um become like like sting i think is incredible mm-hmm. uh and i just keep going back and back like uh i just recently got my dad's record collection and like i'm going through and seeing phil collins and, is like, it vinyl yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh going through seeing all the stuff he listened to <laughs> yeah like a rick james vinyl that nice. i pulled out the other day he's got like massive pink boots on like, <laughs> dad who are you <laughs> uh but yeah yeah the the further i get into this industry the more i like listening to eagles and tom mm-hmm. petty and it's uh just just great sounds um yeah yeah i'd say, say that's it Speak, speaking of 311 wasn't one of your your dreams always to work as a monitor engineer for a yeah. big band <laughs> good memory <laughs> yeah i it, it's it's really funny when when i we were working at plaza uh 311's monitor engineer actually came through on tour with a different band and I didn't really like that guy. He was very, <laughs> very curmudgeon. He just very, very uh, pessimistic guy. And I was like, man, if only 311 would have had me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take his job one day. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, but, but instead, Delta Ray's record is going to kill it, and you're going to run monitors for them in amphitheaters. Oh, God. Two years from now. Yeah, yeah, two, two years from now, amphitheaters <laughs> and interviews. Tell me about an, an app that you want to recommend for people that should be using, like something that you've discovered recently or – Something that helps you just organize your day, or it's gonna be just for fun too. Uh, sure, sure. Um, a lot of people on tour, I'm sure, use it already. But anyone who's starting out, or anybody who is uh, was is maybe in my shoes a few years ago, starting out with the band, like trying to organize stuff. Master Tour is incredible. Uh, great company out of Chicago called Eventric um, makes makes that app uh, just great for organization and. Mm-hmm. Uh, doing everything with venues and advancing and uh, financing and it, it's it's great uh, for audio. I use an app called Audio Tools right on my phone. Uh, help uh, ring out uh, monitors and help uh, uh, look at SPL levels and venues. So make make sure you don't have any hearing damage going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, Temple Runner. Temple Run, Temple Run. Is, is pretty good. Yeah. What's that? What's that? <laughs> I don't know, like the last, maybe the only game I've ever played. Okay. Like on a, uh, just a dude running through the Amazon or something. You just jump over things, <laughs> collect coins. That's pretty okay. good. I those 15-hour more, more games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I downloaded Sonic the Hedgehog uh, on, my, on my phone. When, you, when you got 15 good. hours in the van. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you just find some entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What is a piece of media that you share the most that can be something that gives advice, motivates people, or even just entertain? This can be a book, a podcast, a video, an article, or so on. Uh, I guess that depends on who I talk to. If I'm talking to somebody that's in, in audio at all, I'll recommend the uh, Dave Rat uh, YouTube mm-hmm. videos. Uh, also an audio podcast, uh, Sound Design Live. Um from a guy out in the Bay Area puts that on. Uh, the band hates when I whenever I drive and I listen to that. <laughs> like everyone immediately throws headphones in because they <laughs> they hate hearing about sound reflections and uh, uh, it's horrible. Um, but yeah, I, I I love that stuff. Uh, and then the band's really big into TV shows, so they've influenced me in a lot of uh, things to watch. Uh, I'm watching The Wire right now, super old HBO show, but uh, it's really, really great. And so I get a lot of show recommendations, media from them. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And uh, who are some of your mentors? Right here, I'm talking to them. Oh, I mean, whatever. I mean, we we learned at the same, uh, learned the hardest things at the same time. But uh, as far as like music industry stuff, hands down, you. Uh, like I remember starting out with the band, like. Chris, teach me how to do settlements. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how do I make sure a venue isn't screwing me? What if I do? Right. <laughs> yeah, I think like one of the things advice, like count the security guards. Are, right. they, are they charging you more security than they should be? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, I, I have a class I do in, in, in full set. It's called Deals and Settlements. Yeah. Where the students have to learn how all the different types of deals that are out there. And oh, it's How insane. to settle them by calculator and, and paper. Oh, yeah. And that, I mean, that's the best way to do it. I pull out my phone like, every settlement that i have to do and just like all right cool yep okay uh is the tax really supposed to be this right. like uh i think california tax maybe isn't that high but yeah it's it's weird um 
so yeah you there and then audio wise brian robertson like oh uh, yeah like as i was cutting my teeth he was a, a great audio engineer that came through the plaza that we'd have on our bigger shows and, uh, and for those that don't know brian he's worked audio for a long time been oh, a production yeah. manager tour manager and now works for orlando magic and florida state university as their number yeah. one audio guy I mean, I, he may have gone past beyond that but right some right things that he was doing when we yeah it, you know, I mean, this guy's worked super bowls like i think he works for tampa bay buccaneers too like he does a lot of broadcast audio but uh he's just really really smart knows his stuff uh and taught me a lot um at the plaza but uh also like just i think it was him saying that just have a good attitude mm-hmm. uh and it I goes think, a long way yeah i think he saw that in me whenever we were working together and he's like you're you're gonna be fine like i would i would ask him a lot like cool so how can i do this better what can i do here he's like you'll figure it out as you go just like just have a good attitude about it and mm-hmm. put a smile on like you, you, you're gonna go far he wasn't wasn't worried about me and that was that was really good advice right um when, uh, yeah working with him was really great so if you had a band starting out today, knowing everything that you know, uh, but you had no contacts and only $500 to start with, what will your first year as a band look like? $500, no contacts. But you know everything that you know today. But I know everything I know today, starting out with the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times I think that openers will fall off of tours because mm-hmm. a bus will break down or something like I guess uh, local local venue, like figure out who's opening, see if they can push doors back an hour, mm-hmm. uh, or or push it push doors up an hour. Have friends come out like uh, to do an opening slot for whoever. You might get some fresh faces in there, um, and then you, you may have to pay the venue a little bit for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that'd be part of the five hundred, uh, and then maybe give all of that money to your sound engineer. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, tip the sound guy. <laughs> tip the sound guy. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, put it in the gas tank. Get get in front of faces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, find, find new fans. Yeah, I love it. And then, what's your definition of making it? Oof, you knew that one was coming. Oh uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Uh, waking up and still loving what you're doing, uh, r- regardless of. Uh, hard days, uh, stressful days, as long as like at the end of the day and at the beginning of the next day, you're still, you're still into it Mm -hmm. and you can, uh, obviously like financially, like at least support yourself and, uh, support a future, whatever it is that you want. Um, yeah, it it just, just being able to fall in love with what it is that you do, uh, Mm -hmm. and still have a drive and passion for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and and to not plateau mm-hmm. uh so making it is like if you if you have made it like re- keep going right reach something find another it mm-hmm. yeah just keep keep pushing yourself keep raising the bar. yeah yeah as long as you uh as long as long as you're still passionate about it mm-hmm. what is something that someone can do today to get one step closer to their journey of making it Ooh, uh pull pull out that stack of business cards uh, figure out who you haven't reached out to, um, reach out to them again, uh, yeah, uh, make those connections again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, what is something that you do every day to make you feel fulfilled? Make me feel fulfilled. Maybe not every day, but I go back and I watch that Dropbox video of the band, uh, just being like, all right, this is, this is good. This is where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, kind of recenters me. Mm-hmm. sometime awesome and then the uh, last one um how can people get in touch with you and learn more about you and anything that you want to plug that you want people listening to support like the new delta ray record and music coming soon and th- yeah uh, uh let's see I'll, I'll do both at the same time best way to get a hold of me is to buy a delta ray ticket and then go to the audio console <laughs> <laughs> Yes, go see live music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So support live music. Delta Ray is live music. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it'll be a great show. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I mean, people people can email me Delta Ray Production at Gmail, uh, uh, Instagram. Like, I, at some point, I thought about doing a blog, but everyone and their mom's got a blog, so <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, but yeah, e- email, socials, 
uh, just look up Delta Ray Adam somewhere, and I'll, I'm I'm bound to come up. Cool. And anything else you want people to support and uh, support this to? podcast, people? Come yeah. on, this is uh, <laughs> this is great. This is this is Chris G. Uh, yeah, one of one of my influences, one of one of my mentors here. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, yeah. Support this. Support live music. Uh, like I'm not going to tell you to go buy a record because everyone's going to Spotify or Apple Music anyway. But yeah, at least keep listening. Well, Spotify, Delta Ray, there then go is. buy a ticket. Go to the sound guy, which is be Adam. <laughs> Proper term, audio engineer. Right, right. Sound and, guy's and, fine. And say, and say what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you see my parents say audio engineer, other than that, uh, sound guy's fine. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for doing this. It was Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. And I think there's only one appropriate way to, to send this off with a yo, yo chief. chief. <laughs> Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed this interview with Adam Taylor and all the wonderful stories of his journey so far. Thank you all so much for listening to Making It with Chris G. Please remember to subscribe on iTunes, leave us a review. Those help so much. It's it's very easy, takes you five seconds. Hit the five stars. If we brought it, less if, if we haven't, but hopefully it's five stars. Hopefully this interview... This interview and all this information was very valuable to you guys. You can also follow us on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Chris Goy Sweta. That's Chris, C-H-R-I-S-G-O-Y-Z-U-E-T-A. We're also starting to pop up on YouTube and anywhere else podcasts live. My favorite app is Podcast Addict since I unfortunately don't have an iPhone. I'm with the droid people out there, but check us out on Podcast Addict. That's my favorite app. And thank you all again so much. I really appreciate you all for listening. appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully you're learning a lot from these interviews every single week. So see you again next week on Making It with Chris G. And remember, try new things, make stuff, create content, be good to people, and in the words of the great Bob Marley, live the life you love.